I'm working on a Father's Day album using a Maya Road long binder with envelopes, just four chipboard tabs and four craft envelopes, and the Bow Bunny Timepiece Collection. And I'm going to start by painting the raw chipboard cover. It's just easier to paint some portions of the cover than it is to try and completely wrap the entire cover with um, paper. So I'm using some of the Making Memory scrapbook paint, and this is a color called Shopping Bag. This is actually a really nice color that's partway between a craft and a cream. It's like a very light, creamy craft, and it goes extremely well with the Bow Bunny Timepiece Collection. And I'm just painting the outside back spine, the outside edges, and pretty much anywhere that I don't plan to put um, cardstock or patterned paper. And I'm just going to um, get the chipboard all soaked with it. And now I'm painting in and around the uh, hardware. And again, the hardware was already on there and I didn't want to have to try and wrap paper around it or take it off and put it back on. So I'm just going to paint around it and just leave that area without paper. And that's a really easy way to cover some of your chipboard if it's an odd shape or um, if there's an obstruction um, preventing you from putting paper down. And once that's done, set it aside to dry and I'm taking this piece of paper from the Bow Bunny Timepiece collection that I plan to use on my front cover and I'm going to put diamond glaze all over those three clocks. Uh, I want their faces to be shiny and the metal on the clocks to be shiny and so I'm just taking diamond glaze and filling all of that in. And diamond glaze is um, pretty much just it's a cl clear dimensional glaze. It's the same thing as glossy accents or crystal lacquer or any of those. So they're all the same. So now I'm going to set that aside to dry, which is for my outside cover, and I'm going to start working on the inside covers. And so I've cut my cardstock down that I want on the inside covers, and I'm going around all the edges and in the center with Beacon 3-in-1 glue, um, which is a new glue I just tried um, this week and I really like it. It gives you a little bit more time to line things up perfectly than the Scotch Quick Dry does, um, so it works great for a project like this. Um, I still love Scotch Quick Dry, so I'm not abandoning it completely for this glue, but I have been really happy with the glue so far. Um, so what I'm going to do is after I've put it down. I'm just brayering the whole area to get out any air bubbles, make sure nothing is going to wrinkle, make sure the paper is really stuck down to the chipboard. And then I'm going to trim um, any excess paper from around the edges. And this is a little tricky <laughs> because I had to hang the binder over the side of my desk uh, to get this done because of the rings. I couldn't get it to lay flat on my mat. So this wasn't the easiest thing and I didn't have a perfectly clean cut like I like. So uh, once I was done, I went through with my sanding block, which I just got from the hardware store. It's for prepping walls for paint. It's a fine grit and I'm just going around the edges to get them nice and smooth. And then once I've gone around the, all the edges and gotten everything nice and smooth, um, I'm just going to ink the edges of this album. And my goal for this album is to keep it pretty clean and masculine. So I'm not planning on doing a ton of spraying, inking, distressing, etc. So the ink I've chosen to go around the edges is the Ranger Archival ink and coffee. And the reason I chose it is because the brown goes very well with the Bow Bunny collection, but also because the pad of that ink pad is extremely firm and so it just leaves a very thin line. It doesn't go too deep into the paper. So I've got the pad now and I'm just going to go around the edges and you'll see as I go around the edges that the line of ink it's leaving is very very thin. Um, and You can barely tell. Um, it just gives it a nice little frame but it, it doesn't really take away or add too much to the paper. So now that um, the inside front 
covers, or inside covers and the front cover are, have all been adhered down. Uh, and I'm going to just show you how to do the other front cover. It's very easy. Just inked the edge that was going to be closest to the spine before I glued it down. And I glued it down exactly the same way that I glued down uh, the pages for the insides. Just got that glue very, very close to the edge all the way around and then put it all over the center. And then when I put my paper down, I gave it a little shimmy to kind of spread the glue out um, and give me better coverage with the glue. And of course I went over it with the brayer as well. So here you can see that I'm trying to lining it up with the spine and I'm just making sure that the paper stops just short of where the spine bends. Um, that's, I don't want it to wrap around. And again, I'm just going to clean up the edges with a sanding block because it wasn't the best scenario for uh, using the craft knife and then go around the remaining three edges with the archival ink in the coffee color. Here you can see that the ink pad is again leaving a very thin line. If you don't have archival ink, the pad on the stays on ink is very similar to this and you can get a pretty good thin line uh, using your stays on pad versus your pigment pads or your distressing pads. And now I'm getting ready to decorate my cover and I'm going to wrap some of the score tape uh, just around uh, the front cover near the spine because I'm going to put a corduroy uh, ribbon I have. It has kind of a masculine look to it. And um, my friend sent me some of the score tape to try. I uh, I'm kind of, you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, the, the red line tape and the score tape are, are pretty much um, the same to me. I haven't noticed any big advantages to one over the other since I cut the score tape anyway because I'm just too OCD not to. Um, and since I have been able to find the red tape cheaper than the score tape, I'm probably going to stick to uh, the red tape. But I appreciate uh, the opportunity to try it. And um, I think it's just personal preference, whichever one you like better, because they seem to me to be the same strength. And this is a May Arts ribbon, and it's a velvet corduroy May Arts ribbon. And it's in a brown that matches the collection nicely. I just wrapped it right around. And then I'm going to use an embellishment and hot glue to cover that join there. I've got a metal button. Um, from junkets and I'm going to thread it with some taupe hemp and then I'm going to just adhere it right to the seam with the hot glue gun and that'll make a nice embellishment and it'll keep it pretty masculine. Um, we'll try and stay away from too many flowers and ribbons. Um, just make this a good dad album. And I'm going to put the hot glue right on the seam because it's easier than trying to handle a metal button that has the hot glue on it. Um, it can get very messy and the glue can actually heat up the button and get pretty, pretty hot. So uh, it's just an easier way to do it is to put the glue where you want the embellishment to end up. And now I'm adding hot glue to some of the Tim Holtz metal uh, photo corners and uh, just the front and then I'm um, holding them down letting the glue cool and then I'm going to wrap the uh, folds around to the back and um, I'm going to use a brayer to bend them around because I have pretty weak thumbs and the photo corners are a little hard for me to uh, bend around the chipboard actually. So right here you can see where I'm kind of using the brayer to shove um, and you can use your bone folder or your thumbs, whatever works for you is fine. And here are two pieces of paper from the collection that I have cut out on my Big Shot with my Nest Abilities label 16. And one is just a solid distressed background and the other has more time pieces on it. And I'm just inking the edges of both die cuts with the archival ink in the coffee color. And then I am going to glue them together and um, 
add my title. And my title is going to be World's Best Dad, and I'm using a combination of thickers from American Crafts and also uh, some little block letters from Junkets. I just got a bunch of stuff from Junkets. I know they're out of they're out of business now, but um, Zandra mailed me um, a bunch of hardware. Um, it was perfect because I was wanting to do this um, masculine album, and so a lot of their stuff is really good for a more uh, masculine book. So I'm going to add the Scotch quick dry liquid adhesive to the back of my letters and um, I just find that the adhesive on the American Craft stickers just doesn't hold up well over time especially if you're going to put it on the cover you definitely want to use um, an additional adhesive than what's on there. And now I'm using foam tape to adhere um, the block letters in between the worlds and dad and the block letters spell out best. So any place where they overlay the thickers, they don't have adhesive, and then where they're just going to be flat on the paper, they have uh, the dimensional adhesive, and that way they'll lay flat slightly above the thickers. And um, that spells out world's best dad. And so now I'm adding uh, dimensional tape to the back of the whole die cut title piece and then I'm just going to stick it right to my cover. And I'm just going to add a few more little embellishments and then the cover will be done. So what I've done here is I've tied a loop of the same hemp that I used to string the buttonhole around a life's journey key from K and Company. And I really like the keys that they designed for the Life's Journey collection because they're flat on one side. So they're great for your scrapbook projects. Um, they're easy to glue down and they're a lot less dimensional and it, they're really nice. Uh, so that's that. And then I'm going to add two more buttons. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the first button, which is string the buttons with the hemp and then glue them down with the hot glue gun. And again, after I had strung the buttons, I added the glue directly to the cover so that I could just stick the buttons right down. So I'm just adhering my third one. And each of the three buttons are different, but they're all the same silver finish. Uh, so they all go together, um, but they're not too matchy-matchy. And then I'm going to take some Seven Gypsies gears and I'm going to use three of them around the title as well to just add a little bit more metal uh, to my title page. And I'm just going to put glue on the gears themselves and then glue them right down to the page. So I've got my three gears there. And then I'm just going to add a little piece of black bling to the center of the two gears that have hollow centers. Um, and I'm just going to use some Recollections bling that I um, have had in my stash for a while. And that finishes off the front cover. I have completely finished this mini album and I'll be showing you in a series of videos coming up the rest of the pages coming together. But the album is done, so um, they're all going to be coming soon. Thanks.